Let's go over and talk about uh, one forward that made probably the the biggest impression when it comes to the first preseason game of the year. Yes, a Yarvi gets off to a strong start, as strong as you can get, right? A hat trick, even though they lost the game. He puts the puck in the net three times, which has always been the biggest bugaboo with his game is he can do everything. He struggles to finish plays. Well, if he finds that, He'll stay at the NHL level. I think that's plain and simple. But the question that stands right now is, after that three-goal performance, after what has been reported as a strong start to training camp for the Bison King, where does he stand among Penguins right-wingers? It's tough to say. He's still probably down on the depth chart a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, in just a, in the matter of a game, put... You know, put himself on notice, put a lot of the team on notice, and uh, is making sure he has everyone's attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's important for a player like him that, did I not say to keep an eye on him this camp and preseason? You did. You All did. right. Point one for me. But he's making it a point to make sure everyone keeps an eye on him now. First game is that that first impression he's given is that he's come? He came back stronger. We think he's finally fully healthy from uh, double hip surgery last off season, mm-hmm. and he's already proving it. He's already showing that he can bring an extra skill set with this finishing ability. And I, you know, say what you want about a preseason game. The Buffalo Sabers were icing a an NHL roster and also pot at seven, so we yeah. know there was some sort of uh, pedal to the metal from the Buffalo side of things. And Poyarvi going out with essentially a WHL lineup and scoring three, not a bad start. Two couple, I mean, power play goals, not like those matter for him because he's probably not gonna be on the power play, but uh taking advantage of the opportunities that he's given, taking advantage of that open ice and proving his worth to this NHL lineup that he's fighting for. And yeah. it's a matter of just making it. What do you mean it doesn't matter about the power play? He could be Mr. Second Unit, and you're Mr. Second Unit. So that could be, he could be you're right up right. the wheelhouse. You're damn right. Him and Michael Bunting would wreck shop on that second unit. There you go. There you go. The the 30 seconds that they're able to get whenever they have to break the puck in. Um, but when I look at the right side, I mean, it's obvious that Raquel and Rust are up at the top. As long as Raquel is playing on, on the correct wing, it's Raquel and Rust at the top. And then... Oh, it gets jumbled, right? I, I think we all know that Nolachari is making the NHL roster. That much is a given. He's probably starting the year on fourth line right wing. So it's really, you know, and it helps if you can play both sides. It's really that third line right wing spot. And then the one or two, depending on how they structure this roster, the one or two positions when it comes to healthy scratches. Now, when it comes to who could vie for those, I think it's four names vying for three spots potentially. It's Rucker McGroarty, who is waivers exempt. Is this where this comes into play? That becomes a question. You have Cody Glass, who has, again, still continued to be somebody who, based on his deployment so far, I'm not exactly sure how they view him. It's Puyarvi who we're talking about. And then it's Valtteri Pustinen, who played 52 games last year, scored 20 points, and is expected to make another jump in 2024-25. So, with that in mind, Horwat, as we sit here today, which by no means everything can change within the next couple of weeks, but as we sit here today, do you think Pugliarvi breaks camp on the NHL roster? If I'm saying for um, right now, yes. It's, okay. it's, a, it's a tough yes, but he's already got a hat trick under his belt in the first few games. He's got more time to elevate more time to prove that he's worthy worthy of the spots um i just think if things shake out correctly i there's a good opportunity for him there's a good chance for him and the business of the game i know rucker mcgordy wanted to play in the nhl Mm -hmm. he's gonna have to stand out uh at least once in this preseason to really solidify a spot Mm -hmm. and not that he didn't do it so far not that he hasn't done it so far but continuance yeah keep that power Throughout Keep up these that next pace. two weeks, yeah, sure. big time. But also, like, kind of give him the notice. I mean, if you're choosing AHL spots, I mean, it's either Manitoba or Wilkesbury. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, pick your poison, Rutger. But 
at the same time, if the Penguins can also, if they, if this is the direction they need to go in or have to go in, uh, give Rutger that promise of you'll be the first call up without doubt. You'll be, yeah. In, Break not even break glass in case of emergency call. No, the second we need a player, a name, you're you're the first call. You're number one on the speed dial. Do people still use speed dial? No, I don't believe they do. They <laughs> use Siri at this point, which I'm hoping not all my devices in this room just went off. Uh, but I think the thing you're looking at is look at last year. How long did it take before they had to use that first call up? Four games. Yep. So if Rucker does get sent down it might be less than a week before he's brought back up. But again, that is a discussion for a little bit later. When it comes to Yesapul Yarvi, I think it's between him and Valtteri Pustinen. That because I, I truly believe that McGroarty is going to make this team out of camp. I think he has shown a lot so far, and I think he's going to get more opportunities as this camp goes along. And I think the Penguins see him as somebody who they can start out in the bottom six, and he's going to be able to build. Uh, he's not somebody they're going to want to sit in the press box. So if he's not going to make their lineup, I have a hard time believing he's going to be that healthy scratch. But honestly, watching what I've seen so far, it feels like Ruckin McGroarty is on path to make the roster out of camp. Things can change uh-huh. in the next two weeks. So I think that leaves Pugliarvi to contend with Valtteri Pustin. And now there's a chance that both of them make it and Cody Glass is the odd man out. But again, are you going to stick a two plus million dollar player on waivers? I don't know. So it comes down to those two. And the question I have for you, Horwat, is who do you think is more likely to make it through waivers if it's Pujarvi or Pustin and they have to weigh that question? Who do they think they can squeak through? Which one of them do you think is more likely to be able to make it and end up in Wilkes-Barre? You know, I would say Pujarvi. I think Pustin might get scooped if he needs to to put his way through. Also, I want to see Pustin make this team because... Like you said, he's supposed to have – he had a pretty good season last year, and it's supposed to get on, only get better this upcoming year. I want to see him make this team just to see what he can do. I think he would be the more likely option to be taken off of waivers if – claimed off of waivers if it came to that. Paul Yarby, because let's consider the fact that he made it to December without a contract in the first place last season. I think we need to recognize the difference between him that at that time and him now. Yeah, and but well, what I'm going to get at is, though, teams were well aware that he, I'm assuming teams were still well aware that he could do something in the NHL. He was planning on coming back. It wasn't, um, this is it, I'm going to sit out for however long, maybe go play in <clears throat> Europe for a year and prove it. No, he wanted to come back to the NHL right away. Not only that, he signed for two years. I think what makes him more probable to fly through waivers is the fact that <clears throat> Teams didn't give him too many looks until December. And then when he got here and started playing at the NHL level, didn't play very much, got four points, I think it was, in mm-hmm. 20 some something games of a 20 something games of a run. And now has what? Been a whole off season. Didn't have the playoffs to prove anything, didn't have a long run, had an off season to rest up and heal up. I mean, he's not leaving. 31 other teams with a whole lot of, oh, here's what you can do now. So if he needs to be the one that gets sent through, I think he's likely to do it. 